Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Weekend Watch Repair. My name is Adam. I appreciate you joining me here today. On the bench is a vintage Hamilton, a model M89-3 from 1964. This watch is a really cool watch because after we restore this one, I am going to be giving it away. That is correct. This channel recently surpassed 1,000 subscribers, and I was trying to think of something I could do to show my appreciation for all the people who've kind of engaged with this channel and uh, just something I could do to, you know, just to say thank you to everyone who, who kind of supported me along the way. And so I thought a giveaway would be fun. I've never done one before. This channel is not particularly big or anything. So I'm kind, kind of flying by the seat of my pants here, but I just thought it'd be fun to do. So I had a bunch of watches in the project drawer and I was looking at them thinking, what would people most like to have? And I thought this Hamilton fit the bill because it's a well-respected brand. A lot of people know what it is. They're extremely well-made. And on top of that, I think this would be a fun project. So that's what we have here. This one here is, as you can see, it's in pretty rough shape outside. It's just really dirty. It's well-worn. It had this expandable spidal bracelet on it that was only attached on one end. And uh, you can kind of see there how dirty that thing is. I kind of tap it on the bench here just to see what would come out of it. <laughs> As you can see, I mean, this, you know, th this watch hasn't seen a cleaning in quite some time. And oddly enough, I was in my research on this watch. I was looking at those bracelets and most of the, you know, photos I could find of this thing all had those spinal bracelets on it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, I wouldn't think they would put that on there originally, but this watch here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this bracelet off here. One thing I noticed, uh, I learned why this thing was only connected on one end on one of the lugs on the other side of the case, the tip of a spring bar was still broken off inside of the lug. And, uh, that came out pretty easily. It didn't have to fight me too much, but that's why this thing was only connected on one end. And I started looking to see if I could find the opening where I could remove this case back and I couldn't see an opening. So what I'm doing here is just using some pegwood to try to clean up and scrape away a lot of that old dirt and grime that's in there. That way I can inspect it closer like you see here and see if I can find where to, you know, put in the case knife to pop this back off. And as it turns out, this is a one piece case. So there is no part on the back where you can pop the back off. So what that means is I have to get my old claw tool out here that I hardly ever use. But what we're going to do is pop it around the crystal and then tighten that down and it's going to squeeze that crystal around on all four sides and just barely reduce the outside diameter of that. And then we can lift it away just like you see there. You can see how that crystal kind of attaches to that tool. Don't really use that often, but you, on one piece cases, uh, you know, that's kind of one of your only options. Here, I'm going to remove the crown and I'm sorry I didn't really get this in camera. I'm using some plastic and then putting it over the crown and then using some tweezers to get behind that in the case and then just popping that crown off, just like that. And as you can see that little notch in the crown there, that, and that, that kind of connects into the stem that once we pull this watch out, you'll be able to see it. But before we pull the watch out of the case, I wanna go ahead and remove the hands so that when I remove the watch from the case, I don't damage them. And these hands are have a slight, the, the minute hand and the seconds hand have a slight curve to them where they follow the curvature of the dial. So I, I definitely do not want to risk damaging that. You can definitely see on the seconds hand how it had that curve to it. And then taking a look at the dial, you know, this thing is in pretty good shape for being, you know, 59 years old at this point. There was a few little pieces of the clear coat that had, had flaked away at the very edge between the 10 and 11 o'clock, 10 and 11 hour markers, and then just a few pieces of dirt. But, um, and there's kind of a mark around the three o'clock position that you have to kind of hold it in the right light to even see it. But the dial's in great shape otherwise. Uh, later on, there, there's something really cool with the logo on this dial. I'll, I'll zoom in and show y'all here in a bit. But that's that. And then, so now we have this one piece case. It looks like we can see there's one service mark in there from a previous watchmaker. Um, I mean, really not able to decipher those numbers. I don't necessarily know exactly what they mean, but definitely for sure one person's been in here. So now we need to remove the dial. And in order to do that, there are two dial feet screws. 
that we need to loosen up before we can pull this dial off. And you can see me removing the second one here right now, and I'm just loosening it. I'm not gonna remove the screw completely. Just by loosening it, it takes pressure off those screws off of the dial feet. And then I just use a little screwdriver to get in between the dial and the movement and just gently work it loose. And if I can remember where I put my camera, I'll get it in frame here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this hour wheel removed. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna flip this movement over and then put it in our holder tool and just get a basic a, a time graph reading to start out. So I made sure that this had a full wind in it and then put it on the time graph for machine and we'll take a look here. It's running a bit slow. The amplitude is a bit low. The beat errors, I honestly expected it to be a bit worse. You know, and what this reading kind of tells us is at first glance, this watch seems to be in pretty good shape. It just, it's due for just a service. But uh, that, that that's a great reading, a great before reading right there. It's a little bit misleading uh, because, you know, as I kind of get into this a little bit further, there was some, some things I didn't necessarily like, but, and we, we, I resolved during the process of working on this watch, but you know, that's a, that's a great starting point. So the first thing we're going to do here is remove the automatic works because in order to remove the wind from the watch, all this has to be gone. So I removed those two screws and now I'm just working this assembly around. There we go. And that and the rotor all come off as a unit. You've probably noticed on a lot of my old Seiko videos where that rotor comes off separately on this one here, it all comes off as a unit. So now I'm pulling the click spring away with my tweezers and just using the screwdriver on the ratchet wheel screw to remove the wine from this watch. There's a little like and subscribe logo. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, like it, a video, leave a comment, I sure would appreciate it. So what I'm doing here, this is a little bit later. I attempted to remove the balance unsuccessfully. And what I found out was that on the edge of the balance cock, there is kind of a lip and it's, it hits the underside of this ratchet wheel because there's a post underneath that lip and you have to lift it, that part of it straight up. You can't lift it up at an angle. So I was having a difficult, difficult time removing that. So what I'm doing is just removing the ratchet wheel and now we can go ahead and remove this balance screw and remove the balance. And we'll do a close up shot here, kind of showing that lip. And it just, it, I mean, it barely, barely touches that ratchet wheel. See that lip right there? And there's a post underneath that that goes straight down. So you can't really lift it off an angle. It has to come straight up. And it was just enough, just barely touching to the point where I wasn't comfortable doing it with that ratchet wheel in place. So. But now the thought's off, we can go ahead and remove the balance. And we're gonna follow that same, proce same procedure, putting it back in. And there's probably, there's probably a lot easier way to do it than what I did, but that's the way I did it. So under the microscope, I'm just taking a look at this balance spring and impulse jewel. The spring looks to be in pretty good shape. That impulse jewel is the, you know, the shellac on it. I mean, it's not loose or anything, it's solid. I mean, it's, everything's looking good. Outside of being dirty, it looks pretty good. And now we need to remove this click spring. And I was pretty certain this thing was gonna fly off as soon as I did this. And I really should have put some Rodico underneath it, over it, but, and that's what I would have done if I wasn't filming. But <laughs> for the purposes of filming, I went ahead and just bit the bullet and let it fly off when I unscrewed it. But not a big deal, they don't fly very far. So now, even though there really shouldn't be any tension on the spring at this point, I'm still using some Rodico here to pick that up and safely remove it. And then I couldn't see the spring at first and there it is. Sometimes they get camouflaged on the movement if you have a screw laying somewhere and I didn't see that at first, so I just tip it over. Now we can remove the ratchet wheel. This just has one screw and I'm just using my little hold down tool to keep the ratchet wheel from turning as I remove the screw. And as it turns out, I didn't unscrew it enough as you see here, so. <laughs> I just use my tweezers here to just unscrew the screw a little bit more and then that can safely come out as well. So while you see me taking this apart here, I would like to go into a bit of detail on this giveaway as I'm sure it's probably why a lot of people clicked on this video in the first place. And so, like I said before, uh, uh, this is a new channel. It's only been around, I think four months now. And uh, you know, I, I was really hesitant 
hesitant to even start uploading videos just because, you know, I've always, I've liked working on watches, but I've never considered creating YouTube content from them. So, um, you know, I think this channel has been really well received. I definitely tried hard to do the best I can on these videos and actually want, when I pull this off, oof, that makes me cringe. That's, that's exactly how you don't want to remove a pallet fork bridge. Um, yeah, that just, I mean, I, I kind of got lucky there. If you want to damage pivots, that's the way to do it. But uh, we got lucky on that one. So I just wanted to point that out. That was my mistake there. But I'll continue to disassemble this. Um, but yeah, the channel has been really well, well received. And uh, so I, I thought it'd be fun. The channel recently hit 1,000 subscribers. And I've stated in previous videos that the goal was never to be monetized and to speak truthfully you know, this is not a big channel. I mean, it is monetized now, but I've made like, uh, I, I checked it like two hours ago and I've made like $17 since it's been monetized. And I, I can't even cash that out until it hits a, it's a hundred dollars. So maybe next year sometime I'll be able to cash out a hundred dollars, but uh, that's not what it's about. It's just, this is a hobby of mine, but I thought hitting a thousand subscribers was so cool. It's a nice big round number and it was worth doing something on. So I decided to do a giveaway and uh, looking through the project drawer, there was this watch. There were some other ones. It was between this watch and one other one. It was a, a, um, I knew I wanted to do something other than a Seiko because the last several videos have been Seikos. And although those are kind of my first love on watches, especially working on them, it was time to show a different brand on the channel. And so this one here is a super well-made movement. Uh, this is a Hamilton, by the way, this is a Hamilton caliber 689, which is based on the ETA 2451 and the 18,000 BPH movement really well made. And, uh, so that yeah, it was this, and there was this red dialed croton with the crown at the six o'clock position, a weird watch. I just, I love it. It was so cool and different. I bought it off eBay, but I figured more people would know what this, this watch was. And, would kind of appreciate having it. it's a very classic, very well-known brand. And so that's why I went with this one, just because I think it, it appealed to a broader audience. A lot more people know what this is and would know what that Croton is. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to rebuild this, this watch. And I was kind of reading on how do I do a giveaway? And what I came up with is in order to do this, it's going to have absolutely zero cost to the winner. Uh, so I, I've read about, you know, scamming and all that stuff on YouTube giveaways. And so I, I will just say to everyone, you know, watching this video right now, if you are contacted by anyone asking for money or anything like that, it is definitely a scam. This is going to be 100% free shipping included, fully insured. Uh, I'm covering shipping. So at no point will I ever ask anyone for any payment info on anything. So just, you know disclaimer. But what I think would be fair is if, uh, all I would require is that you just be a subscriber to the channel, leave a comment on this video. I mean, it could be about the watch. It could be about just entering the giveaway or whatever you want. Just leave a comment. And what I'm going to do is use a, a, a random comment chooser that, uh, I've, I've got for this channel. So it'll, it'll randomly choose a comment and I'm going to keep it fair. So uh, it has a utility where I can eliminate duplicate entries. So if you leave more, more than one comment, that's fine. It'll just count your comment as one. Uh, you know, it won't, it won't count replies or anything, and it won't count my own comments. So I think that would be absolutely the fairest way to do it. So we're going to leave this video up, and then I'll do a follow-up video, and I'll record a screen as we choose the comment, as we choose the winning comment and the winning user. And all I'll require is this, they reach out to me at the email address you see on screen, which is also going to be on the, in the description of the video, you can contact me there. And I figured just to, you know, show proof of you are who you are. I thought the easiest way to do it would be just to show me a, you know, a, a screen grab of, um, you know, just a screenshot of you logged into YouTube under the winning account name. And I, I figure that's easy enough to provide and that authenticates the winner. And, uh, you know, we'll exchange some information and I will get your watch shipped to you and we'll provide you tracking. So I figure that's the fairest way to handle it. 
And uh, I look forward to doing that. And I'll be honest with you, I have been more excited about getting this giveaway watch done and actually giving it away. It's been more exciting than if I was going to keep it for myself, which is, uh, you know, I, I have found that uh, pretty fun. Uh, it's definitely a fun experience. So um, if you'd like to win this watch, and again, and we'll go over this again at the end of the video, but I just wanted to, you know, give a thorough explanation of the thought process behind it and what you need to do to enter to win the watch. And it's just subscribe, make sure you're a subscriber to the channel and leave a comment on this video. And I will announce when the, uh, the follow-up video will come. And if you're picked, just show me you logged into YouTube under the winning account name and your vintage Hamilton will be on its way to you. And so, wow, that speech took up <laughs> most of the disassembly here. We're down to the keyless works at this point. I'm using some Rodico. Uh, this actually, that, that yolk spring there is quite strong. That's a pretty thick spring, uh, you know, in, in watchmaking standards. But we're down here, that removing the yolk. And all we have left here is the setting lever. And the setting lever is held on, is screwed in by, from the under, other side. So we're going to go ahead and flip this movement oh, back over. And now we'll just remove the setting lever spring. And you can see that, yep, saw the lever there just kind of drop. So I'll just use some Rodico to pull that screw out right there. And then the setting lever is just sitting on the bench below the watch right there. There we go. That is disassembly. Now we can get down to work on the barrel. So I have it on my bench block here and I'm just using my squeezers there just to separate the two and just gently working the lid open just to make sure I'm not putting any pressure on it in one direction. I don't want to bend it. So I'll go ahead and put it back on the bench block here and we need to remove the arbor. So I just kind of, it's difficult to film here. I mean, I've got my hands most mostly in the way, but you can kind of see me pulling out the arbor. And that one actually, that one actually came out really easy to be honest. A lot of times are a lot more stubborn than that. But now you can kind of see me. This is how I like to get these springs started when I remove them. Uh, there might be easier ways, but this is just the way I've kind of liked to do it. And I like to work it around like this with my tweezers is until, until there's enough of it where I can get my fingers underneath it. And then I'll just slowly work it, work it out of the watch. And here we go. Well, let's take a look at the spring on the bench and see what it looks like. And that's actually not looking too terribly bad. It's, it's, it's a bit dirty, but nothing major. So now we can go ahead and this center screw here that uh, looks like I cut it short in the edit, but that holds on the oscillating weight. And they've sure have gooped a lot of that grease in there. One thing I noticed, and you probably saw during the disassembly as, as I was mumbling on about the giveaway, was that there's a coat of oil on just about everything on this. Uh, honestly, too much. But this screw here is what holds in these two reversing wheels. Uh, on the 24, uh, 20, yeah, the, uh, the ETA manual for this movement, I have a parcel, so I don't have a manual, but those, they call those Paul wheels. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, everybody knows those as reversing wheels. The one thing you don't want to do when you're handling those is put your tweezers inside those wheels. There's levers and cams and they're very delicate and, uh, uh, you definitely don't grab those by sticking your tweezers into the, into the openings in those wheels but we'll go ahead and remove both of those just like that. And on the other side of the movement, this has the um, transmission wheel and then the uh, ratchet driving wheel. The that second one with that little pinion on it on the left is what engages with the ratchet wheel to wind your watch. And that there is, I'm sorry, that's the reduction wheel, not a transmission wheel. But we get those removed. And that's the automatic works. There's really not a whole lot to this. Um, the, you know, the, the, those reversing wheels and everything else make it look a bit more intimidating than it is. And those reversing wheels can be pretty particular about how you need to clean them and how you need to lubricate them. And they can also, you know, they can cause you some trouble. But um, we'll kind of get into that later. And now just taking a look at this one-piece case. And I'm just going to take some pegwood here. And just before this thing goes into the ultrasonic, I want to run some pegwood over it and see if I can get the bulk of the, you know, the loose stuff and all that and the stuff that's easy to get to and just get as most, most much of that off as I can. And we'll let the ultrasonic do the fine detail work. 
but it didn't take too much and that case was in really good shape. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with some pre-cleaning of these parts before we go into the wash. Now that we got pre-cleaning out of the way and that pre-cleaning was done on almost every part, you know, except for the wheels and just a couple things, but uh, I didn't show every part of that montage, but you get the idea. So now we're going to go ahead and load up all these parts into our cleaning basket. And once we have all that ready, then we can go into the wash. And so this uh, here is again, my, this, this cleaning machine is way overkill for my needs. Cause I, I am a hobbyist, but I was, presented with an opportunity to buy this. Uh, and, uh, so I just jumped at it. So it's a, it's more of a machine than I need, but, uh, I'm sure I'm glad I have it. So I, I kind of have it chopped down here, but the first station is a wash. And then the next three are rinses. And then we spin off the excess solution between each stage. And then finally it goes into a dryer cycle, a heated dryer. And then that's it. Now we move on when everything comes out of cleaning. And the first thing I do here is I've cleaned the capstones and the, uh, the settings for the balance assembly. We're going to go ahead and get these lubricated with 9010 and get these pre-installed. And this one here, uh, first off, one of the, one of the problems I saw during disassembly, or I'm sorry, I, I found during this stage is that once I got both capstones in the, um, there was basically zero, zero in shake on the balance wheel. It didn't want to, I mean, it would move, but it would come to a pretty quick stop. It did not move very freely at all. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get the second shock setting here done in the exact same way. It's all clean and I'll go ahead and assemble it. And then we'll go ahead and put 90, 10 in there. And so when you see me putting it back in, you'll see kind of some footage of the balance wheel and you'll see the pallet fork and the pallet fork bridge is also installed on the watch. And I was using that to take a look at how that impulse jewel is engaging into that pallet fork. And I ended up having to adjust the um, in shake on the balance wheel. And what I did was uh, saw which way it needed to move. And so what I, uh, what I adjusted was the lower uh, this here, the, uh, the lower jewel setting, I ended up adjusting that down about two thousandths of a millimeter. And that gave us the in shake we needed and disengaging the pallet fork properly. And so last here, this also a cap jewel for the, uh, the, the main plate jewel for the escape wheel is capped on the other, other side. I didn't have that part on film, but I hate those, just those, <laughs> those shock settings, but we got that one clean and put back together and you can see the oil ring in that. So now I'm going to go ahead and use a puff of air here. And I'm just taking a look at this and you can see the pallet fork in there as well. But that's why you see that in there where in other videos you normally don't, it's because I had to adjust in shake on the balance wheel on this. And one thing I also found when I first went to attempt to remove the balance, which wasn't on camera because I ended up learning about the ratchet wheels set up, but the screw on the balance wheel was not tight. It was screwed all the way down, but it wasn't snugged at all. And there was a tiny bit of play in the balance. So, and I'm thinking what they did is if, Whoever was in here may have just compensated by not tightening down the balance fully or something. I don't really know. But when that balance was screwed down fully and all the shock settings were both closed, you had no end shake at all. So that's what we did. So now this here's the fun part. Um, <laughs> you get to watch me break a mainspring and I decided to keep this in the video just because I did it. So I'm winding the original mainspring back in and I've, you know, these winders have a learning curve and I've had some pretty good luck lately. I has been a long time since I messed with anything, but I was a bit heavy handed here. I didn't pay attention to what I was doing and I didn't get the bridle inside the drum fully manually. So boom, right there. 
had I paid attention to what I was doing, this would not have happened. But if that bridle is not in the barrel right there, when you go to crank on that mainspring winder, it's going to break just like it did there. And it's a good thing of doing voiceover because there was an expletive or two, <laughs> if I remember correctly, you know, uh, when that happened. But, you know, you live and you learn. Uh, this was just a lesson uh, that I had to remind myself that slow and steady wins the race. We have to be uh, measured and deliberate with our actions. So here we have a brand new mainspring and I order the correct size. But what I don't like here, I have a, you can see me fiddling with this. It doesn't want to go in there all the way. And what the reason that is, is because this is a, there's a step inside the lip of this barrel and it didn't want to see it in there fully. So what I did was I off camera, carefully unwound it out of that washer, wound that very carefully into my mainspring winder, and then installed it this way. So now, at least, uh, you know, this watch has a brand new mainspring. I mean, and that center coil is just dead center. That's looking perfect. We put a little bit of oil in there, and now I'm going to go ahead and slide this drum, or this arbor into place, and the hook is at the 12 o'clock position right now. It's not all the way in. So I'm going to rotate it to the right, and now I hope you caught that, how that hook seated into the mainspring. But there we go. Now we have a fresh new mainspring after I had to, you know, learn a lesson myself, uh, remind myself that, uh, you know, overconfidence, you know, is a pride killer sometimes. But, uh, you know, the good news is, is the winner of this watch is going to get brand new mainspring in it. So, you know, that's great too. The old one wasn't in bad shape, but it probably not as good as a brand new one. So now we go ahead and pop the lid on and we're going to go ahead and sense this lid down. And that cap on that little tool, and that's just a cheap tool. They make an expensive version of that that's 20 something dollars. That tool is like $5. It does the exact same thing. And I'm just looking at the lid under a microscope just to make sure that it's flush all the way around and there's not one side sticking up or anything. So now we're going to begin installation of the movement itself. And the first thing I did there was put in the setting lever screw with a little bit of grease on it. This here is the second wheel. Now we can go ahead and put in our mainspring barrel, pop that into place. And I tell you what, this movement was an absolute joy to work on. It had little quirks, you know, like that, the rat or the, um, the crown wheel being in the way of the uh, balance assembly. And like I said, it probably could come out even without it, but uh, I just didn't like it. But I mean, it, other than, you know, just kind of learning its little eccentricities, this was a, 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 a very enjoyable movement to work on the, um, the in shake for the mainspring barrel. You saw me when I was, you know, rambling on about the giveaway, but you saw me test the in shake of that barrel and it looked great. Uh, I mean, it looked fantastic. I mean, this watch was either the previous watchmaker who did this either adjusted it or it just hasn't needed it. But I mean, it was fantastic. So we didn't need to touch anything. Now we're going to go ahead and the, get the three screws that hold down this barrel bridge on and just getting them all the way down first. And then we'll go through and just do final tightening on each one. Once all of them are seated down and then we know that that barrel bridge is sitting down fully. Now we can begin with the train of wheels installation. We're going to start off with the escape wheel. And that thing just dropped right into its pivot. That was nice. This here is the third wheel. We'll get that in. You got to get that bottom pivot kind of set in pretty deep and engaged with the second wheel. And then I'm just going to give this thing a little turn and yeah, it looks like it's all connected and I'm just lubricating some points here on the fourth wheel. Um, you know, sorry for the light glare It uh, from my angle when I was sitting there working on this, I didn't see that glare, but uh, had it just at the right angle where the light was just reflecting on it. But we get that seated into place and I'm just going to kind of straighten up third wheel and the escape wheel looked like they had moved a little bit. So I'm just kind of nudging them back into where as close to where they need to be as I can to try to f hopefully make this crane wheel bridge installation a little bit easier. We'll go ahead and get that put into place. And it felt like I sat down perfect, but um, you know, it, they're not all the way in yet. So we're going to give the, the, do our little tapping trick to this to see if it helps out a bit. Unfortunately, it didn't get everything this time. The escape wheel, as you can see here, that's the, the jewel for the escape wheel. The escape wheel is not in its upper pivot. So I'm just 
gently, and I mean very, very gently working that wheel around, and then boom, there we go. You see how that pivot just went into that jewel? Well, that's exactly what we're looking for. Then I'll double check all the others to make sure they're good. Give it a quick test. Everything seems to be going good, and so we're gonna go and start putting our screws in. So we do this one at a time here. I like to just give it a test between each screw. It's definitely probably overkill. Um, you know, I honestly can't remember the last time I did, you know, I did one screw and then something came out of place, but not to say it can't happen. But uh, the last thing I want to do is damage anything. And this is definitely the, if you're going to break a pivot, here's where you do it. So uh, just making sure that they're, they, they haven't, none of them have come out of their jewel settings between each screw or doing it around. But after everything is said and done and it's fully tightened, just giving it one last test here. And those wheels are moving beautifully. No problem whatsoever. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the click spring back into place. So we'll start off here with the spring itself. And I just, I, I was going really slow here trying to make sure I didn't lose that spring. But we get that on and then I'll get the click in there. This one here was kind of a challenge to get on. So I'll get that click on and then I'll, you need to kind of hold it down and then rotate it around a little bit. And the edge of that click is actually, thankfully, uh, you know, sitting against the sidewall of that ratchet wheel uh, cut out on the main plate. So it, it kind of holds it in place, but I carefully let it go. And then right here, I just didn't breathe the entire time I was putting that screw in until I got a few threads in then I knew it wouldn't fly away. So there we go. And now I can go ahead and tighten the screw down and we have our click installed. Now we're going to go ahead and do some lubrication. Putting some 1300 here in the upper barrel arbor. And I'm using HP 1300 for the second wheel and the third wheel. And then I'll use some 9010 for the escape wheel and the fourth wheel. After that's done, we're gonna go ahead and just double check in shake on everything to make sure it's all good. And I'll flip the movement over and lubricate the rest of the wheel train on the dial side that we haven't already touched. And while you see me do that, I would like to point out that we recently created a Patreon page for this channel. I was hesitant to do it at first because, uh, but uh, you know, some people kind of convinced me might as well. And uh, you know, let the people join if they want to join. So we did. I'm really happy to say that, uh, you know, it's, I, I think it's been well received. I, I, I try to upload, a, you know, things on there that don't get on YouTube and uh, interact with people as much as I can answer any questions that I can. I show some previews of stuff, work that's coming up. And um, I ask for their advice on, Hey, would you, you know, what would you like to see on this project? Do you think we should refinish this case or not? I actually proposed that question on this watch as a matter of fact. And um, it's just something that I've, I've kind of started to enjoy and uh, I've met some of the people on there already. Uh, one of them and another one I was planning on meeting, but uh, you know, work schedules didn't really meet up and I, we couldn't meet, but we were in the same city. But uh, I would like to do a personal shout out to Donald, Darren, Matt, and Andrew. Um, thank you all so much for joining it. It, you know, we got a small little community over there. I, but I, I really appreciate it so, so much. Um, every, everything that's donated through there goes directly into this channel. I don't keep any of it. Uh, I actually bought a, a pallet fork for one project. And then uh, I bought uh, that little new horror tech hold down tool with that, but everything goes in, into either watches or parts or projects, but everything goes in to support this channel. I, I don't personally benefit from it, uh, but it just kind of helps keep this, this ship afloat. So uh, if you want to join, the link is on your screen. Uh, you can also find it in the description. Everybody who joins, regardless of what level gets a thank you packet in the mail. Um, Andrew's our most recent. So uh, Andrew, uh, yours is on the way right now. <laughs> it was mailed out two days ago as of this recording. So you should get it here pretty quickly. But uh, thank you again, everyone, for taking a look. So while I was talking through all that, you saw me get the ratchet wheel put on and the pallet fork and its bridge put on. And now we are putting on the crown wheel. And the reason we're doing this now, even though uh, I'm not going to put in the balance with that crown wheel in, is because we need to have some tension on the mainspring in order to test that the pallet fork is engaging and disengaging properly and in order to lubricate the escapement. 
So this watch here has kind of an interesting setup. You see when we wind it, it how that ratchet wheel kind of moves. But now I'm just checking this pallet fork, just giving it a nudge and making sure that it's locking and unlocking like it should, and that looks great. So now we're gonna go ahead and lubricate the escapement on here. And what I'm doing is putting some special lubrication for, that's specifically only for this purpose on that exit stone. And this is an 18,000 BPH watch with 15, pal or 15 teeth on the pallet fork. So we're gonna lubricate that escape jewel and apply it that lubrication to five teeth at a time. Just a little, little dab on the tip of it. Here's the second round, five more teeth. And one more time. And thankfully I didn't make a mess of this and get lubrication all over the top of that jewel. That has been known to happen and uh, have to go in there and clean it up. But after we get this applied to its final five teeth, I'll just move that around a few more times and uh, just start to work it in. It's really doesn't do much. I mean, half of a second of that, you know, balance wheel going will do the same amount of work. But once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and remove the power I just put in. Because if we take that crown wheel off at this point, it's going to release all the mainspring tension all at once. And we don't want to do that. So just removing power. And then we'll go ahead and pull this wheel off. You'll see that is a reverse threaded screw. I didn't mention that earlier, but, and that one does not have the three slots cut in it. Like you typically see on Seiko's and a lot of other uh, movements, but that one does not. But as a typical rule, when you're working on watches, if uh, you have a kind of a traditional crown wheel, generally that is reverse threaded. Oddly enough, I just uh, I've got a pocket watch that uh, I was doing and both the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel both had standard screws, but it all worked. So now I'm putting this balance wheel in. And as you know, since we don't have power in the watch right now, it's not gonna spin up on us. But what I wanna do is just make sure that it's in there fully. And so what I'm trying to do is just make sure that that wheel is down in there and it's engaging with the pallet fork correctly. I'm just gonna give it a little shake here, just like that. And you can see it just, just that little movement tells us that it's in there correctly. So just with a puff of air, we'll get that thing spinning and uh, that's looking great. So we'll go ahead and let that spin down. And now I can go ahead and tighten this balance bridge down. And for the last time, we'll go ahead and get this crown wheel put in for the last time, thankfully. Again, this is probably overkill, but um, I just, again, I was just not comfortable with um, the clearance that that lip on that balance cock has uh, because I mean, it would have touched maybe barely, but um, so this is, it's a safe way of doing it. It's a different way of doing it, but uh, it does work. So we got that tightened down and now, as long as our beat error isn't too terribly out of whack, I can go ahead and start to put some wind in this watch. There we go. I'm just testing it just to make sure it's good. But we can start and put some wind in this watch and hopefully this balance wheel will start up. So I'm gonna start putting some wind in. Oop, I didn't slip, you didn't see that. There we go. So we put keep putting a little bit of wind in and then boom, there we go. Thank goodness put a few turns in that and then let that run. And that balance wheel is starting to gain some momentum, looking pretty good. So I um, ended up putting a full wind in it, just doing a little cleanup here. I let it run for about 45 minutes or so, did an initial regulation, uh, just very basic, nothing final, and then let the watch, watch run for 24 hours. And so this reading here that you're looking at is the readings on this watch after it had been running for 24 hours. We didn't put any additional wind in it. And uh, that's pretty darn good. The trace line on that is beautiful. Uh, zero beat error after we finished it. It had about a 2.2 two and a half uh, milliseconds of beat error when we first put it in. That's what caused that initial, just a little bit of delay in it kicking up, but we got all that sorted out. So that's looking great. Um, you know, it's, Pretty good for this, you know, for this watch. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, again, I mean, it's only been running for a day at that reading. I mean, after a week or so, those numbers will get even better. And I'll actually, uh, I'll show you a little bit, uh, another time graph we're reading at the end of the video after it had been running for about a week. And on that one, it had been running for about 30 hours at that point. But um, it, uh, the trace lines look even better. Because when you first started up, that 
that uh, escapement lubrication hasn't worked its way in yet. And so those trace lines do clean up a little bit. So uh, that's good. So we're going to begin assembling the dial side of the watch here, beginning with the key this works. And that is the winding pinion. We put some heavy grease on that winding pinion, but because between that winding pinion and the sliding clutch, uh, that's a really, really high. I mean, there's a lot of, that's probably the most, you know, aggressive friction in the watch is between those two components. And the first thing you did, you saw me do is go ahead and put in the setting lever and screw it down from the other side. So we already got that in place. But we have our heavy grease here and we'll go ahead and pop this into place. And I fiddle with it a little bit, just trying to get it to slide into that winding pin. You don't it didn't have to be there at this point, but I'm using my little hold on tool to kind of brace this thing and then put a little bit more of that grease inside that channel where the yoke is going to sit. And the grease really where it needs to be is on the inside walls of that. That's where that yoke is going to touch. So we'll get that in there and applying a little bit of lubrication here where the yoke is going to sit. It's actually a pretty decent microscope shot. The microscope isn't making a lot of appearances lately, but sometimes there's just certain things that you just can't catch and get on video otherwise. And man, I need to dress my tweezers. Look at that. It kind of looks different when you're looking at it through, you know, macro footage. Those tweezers definitely need to be dressed. So now we're applying some grease where the setting lever and the yoke are going to interact with one another. And we'll go back to the microscope here and get a better view of it. Here we go. Just right there on those faces where they engage with one another. And then one more dab here. That's where the setting lever spring is going to engage with that part on the setting lever. So we'll put a touch of grease there. And here I'm applying a little bit on the elbow of the yoke and on the sidewall, the main plate. And that's where the setting lever or the yoke spring is going to sit. And so that's where the spring is going to make contact with those two pieces right there. Speaking of which there's our yoke spring. So I'll pop that down where it needs to be. And I'm using my little hold down tool and this spring's really strong. So holding it down with that tool and using my brass tweezers to do that. And it moved the yoke a little bit. So there we go. And we get that set back into place. And I'm just carefully making sure that that thing's not going to come off when I've removed my tools. Next thing we can put in is our setting lever spring. So we'll get that dropped into place. There we go. That's going to be held on by one screw. And so I'm just getting the screw down, but not, you know, fully tightened. And normally, you know, the, the, this spring here doesn't have a lot of tension when it's in this position. So normally I, I keep it loose and then I'll we'll set the spring in place on this one here. It really just kind of sat in there. So no big deal. So then I've tightened it up fully and now I'm greasing the stem. So it gets a few points on all four flats of where it goes into the sliding clutch and on the tip and then on the back side of it where it enters the main plate and where the setting lever is going to engage with it. But this thing won't push in fully because we have to loosen that setting lever screw. And so watch that crown. When I loosen it up, that crown will kind of pop down a little bit. Boom, right there. Kind of hard to see. It happens real quick. And then just tighten the screw back up, flip the movement back over, and that thing should be good to go. So I'm just going to use my tweezers here right now to pull this in and out and work it back and forth and see how it feels. And it's feeling pretty good. So we'll just work that lubrication in a little bit. And once that's good to go, I'll just clean up the excess with some Rodico and we can move forward. So again, uh, I know I've already stated it once, but uh, you know, before this video ends, I'd just like to kind of go over the rules of the giveaway again, and uh, it'll be in the description as well. But uh, for anyone who's kind of jumping in at a certain point in the video, if you, if you'd like to win this watch, which uh, gosh, I certainly would, this thing turned out real good. If you'd like to win this watch, all you need to do is be a subscriber to the channel leave a comment on the video. Uh, it could be something as simple as, you know, signing up to win the watch, you know, kind of thing. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but uh, just leave a comment and subscribe. And what I'm going to do is uh, create a follow-up video where I uh, record my screen. I going to use a utility to pick a random comment. It will filter out duplicate users. So, I mean, if you leave 20 comments, 
Um, you know, it's only going to count that as one entry, but uh, I mean, by all means, leave 20 comments. I'll try to answer any questions you may have, but uh, it'll, it won't count my comments and it won't count replies and it'll count in unique users. So I figured that's the fairest way to do it. And then that follow-up video will pick a random winner. All they need to do is contact me at the email address I provided earlier. It's also in the description. Uh, just send me a screenshot of them logged into YouTube under the winning account name. We'll exchange some information and I will ship this watch to you uh, fully insured. And I will also provide tracking at no point. Will you ever be asked by me for any payment for anything whatsoever? So if anyone reaches out to you, you know, saying, you know, they just need you to cover shipping or whatever scam they're running. It is not authentic. Uh, again, reach me at that email address. Um, I'll put it on the screen right now just for a second time and um, we'll go forward. But yeah, it's, this will be at zero cost to the winner. So, but I just wanted to do it again to everyone uh, just as a thank you for reaching a thousand subscribers. And then just in some so small way, showing my appreciation for your engagement on this channel. I truly appreciate it. And this really has turned out to be one fun project. I'm so excited to give this watch away probably even more excited than if I was just going to keep it for myself because it, it, it means more as you know, doing a giveaway because someone's going to get to own this beautiful. And I mean, this thing turned out beautiful vintage Hamilton. That's going to provide years of service and look great doing it. So thanks again, everybody. So after we got the dial side assembled, now we're putting together the automatic works. So we put on the driving wheel for the, uh, the driving wheel for the ratchet wheel and then the reduction wheel. And then I'm just kind of putting this cover back on there. And then I noticed after I did that, it didn't look like it was over all the way. So I'm, this is my OCD kicking in. And sure enough, there was a bit more movement still left in it. So there we go. Now it's seated over there fully. Now we'll flip this over and put the reversing wheels back on. So the first thing I'm going to do here is lubricate the two posts for these reversing wheels. Those reversing wheels were cleaned and then lubricated with Lubetta V105 which is, uh, you know, they, it's called a special lubricant for that. And really what it is, it's 90-10 in a um, solution of uh, basically 30 parts IPA to 30 to 33 parts IPA to one part Lubetta. And really what it does is you soak it in there for about, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. And then you put it on a non-reactive surface, like a piece of paper or something. And then uh, let it sit for about 10 minutes covered. And that IPA will evaporate and then leave a very light, very light coating of 90-10 on the watch. And so, um, I mean, that's what that is. Uh, people seem to make their own. I just, I found a small bottle of it, and so I just bought it. Lubetta, Lubetta V106 is, uh, they make for ball bearings, and it's basically the same thing, but instead of 90-10, they're using uh, a heavier lubricant for that. But um, that's kind of what those are. So now, when once we got those in, and the screw in place to hold those ratchet wheels in place. I'm applying lubrication to the center post there for the oscillating weight. And I'll go ahead and get that and the automatic works bridge assembled as a unit. And then there is one screw holding these together. So I just rotate it around a few times just to make sure it's engaged with the, the, the oscillating weights engaged with that plate correctly. And the teeth aren't grinding or something. They're meshed in correctly. Once we tighten the screw down, we're just going to give it a test each way. And uh, I do this several times and I'm actually looking at that uh, reduction wheel and making sure it's slowly rotating in one direction, regardless of which direction I rotate the, uh, the, the system in. So, and it all seems to be working fine. So now I'm lubricating the top of those two posts for the reduction wheel and the ratchet driving wheel. And now this is kind of awkward to get in just because that oscillating weights in there. So, uh, but we'll get this, bridge put back into place. There we go. And then I'm going to rotate that oscillating weight around a few times. And what you want to make sure of is that that transmission wheel, the ratchet, tra the ratchet driving wheel, and then the ratchet wheel itself are meshed in together correctly. And then everything's working good. And so that, that felt good. So we'll get both these screws started down all the way, but not tightened. You can see that bridge kind of dropped down just a tiny bit. And now we can do a final tighten on that first one. Then I'll just rotate that oscillating weight out of the way because if one screw is visible, the other one's underneath the weight. So you got to rotate it around. And then that one still had a little bit of movement in it still. Yep. There we go. Now we got that thing tight. 
That's why I always go back and double check these. And it may seem redundant a lot of times, but every once in a while you find one of those. So I'm using just a little bit of pin vise here and rotating the crown and winding it and making sure that it feels good. And if a lot of times, if you have problems, one of the problems you might see in those re uh, reverser wheels is it's called the helicopter effect, but you'll see that oscillating weight rotates super fast when you wind it or something. And that's because it's, um, you know, you have issues with your reversing wheels and lubrication. So that's one of the tests I like to do, you know, no helicopter effect. Everything felt great. So, uh, moving on. So we go ahead and put the dial on and now we're going and tightening up those two dial feet screws to secure that into place. There we go. And we can install the hands starting off with the hour hand. And since this thing does not have a calendar function, um, you know, no date, no day, nothing like that. You can really mount this hand in any position you want. It doesn't have to be on any marker at all. And then you set the time around and then bring that around to midnight. Or in this case, I lined it up with three o'clock and then put my minute hand on. And you can see there, it's about one minute past midnight. It's about a minute since I put the hand on versus when I'm actually pressing it into place. So that's why that's looks like it's off by a minute. And now we're getting our seconds hand pushed down. Doesn't take a lot of pressure on this at all. That looks good. And then I'm going to check the profile of it under the microscope to make sure none of the hands are touching. All the clearances look good. I also, uh, since these are curved hands, I use some Rodico as a base and put the hands on it and use some other clean Rodico to, to clean the hands as much as possible. Now that thing looks good. All the hands seem to be lining up exactly like they should. Nothing's bent. Here's a close up of that dial I was talking about earlier. I, I noticed how they had the logo recessed into the dial. I just thought that was super cool. Um, I just liked it. So now we, I, this has been running for several days. Uh, I did final regulation on it. Now we're finally casing this up because once it's in the case, you can't get into the back of it to make any further adjustments. So from the time you saw me putting the hands on and getting all that done to this was uh, several days. But once that's in, now we put our crown in. Now I got a new crystal here. This is a, uh, a, uh, LT to our Loctite style crystal. They call it with a wide base and a stepped, uh, edge on it. It's designed for one piece cases. It's designed for tools like this to grab onto it, but uh, you don't have to use one of these, but it sure does make life easier, but it did take me a while to find one on the right size, but we put that into place and then release that tool and it opens that crystal back up. And now I'm just kind of pressing it down just to make sure that Crystal seated down in there fully all the way around and everything feels good and tight. So this watch is coming together. I decided not to refinish this case. Uh, I was on the fence about it, honestly, but it, you know, after a few days of looking at it disassembled, you kind of lose perspective, but uh, we just cleaned the case up thoroughly and didn't, didn't do anything with it. I think it looks beautiful. So um, the winner is going to get XL link straps on here because that's what I have. I got large wrists. So if you have large wrists, sign up to win this watch because it'll actually fit you. So now that we have this watch all cased up and final regulation done, here's a final time graph reading after it's been running about 30 hours on its current wind. Again, this thing's running like an absolute top. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, on this giveaway, uh, what I wanted to do was just uh, leave it open for two weeks and then tabulate the comments. But I'm actually going to be out of town on a work trip during the week of September 11th through the 15th, returning that Friday afternoon sometime. So it'll be just a hair over two weeks that uh, we're going to leave this open and I will create a video and upload it on that Friday or that Saturday, depending upon when I get back and we will announce the winner at that time. Um, but here you see the finished watch. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. This thing is just, it's, it's stunningly beautiful. It's classic classy uh, and I just love it. And uh, I sure hope the winner does too. I put a lot of love into this watch and it's just running great. So I think it's, they're really gonna, they're really gonna enjoy it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the video. Please like, and subscribe, leave a comment, please leave a comment and win this watch. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hope everyone has a pleasant day. Take care and I will see you on the next one, which is when we announce the winner. Bye.